Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is something that everyone's been asking me about, kind of going in on me about, and that is my school. What am I? What did I go to school for? How long was I in school? And all that good shenanigans. So let's just do a little get ready with me slash chit chat. And yeah, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so let's just jump right into this shit. I wrote a list so that I wouldn't forget nothing. So let me put this in front of me. Okay, so let's start with enrollment. So basically, if you don't know, I went to Carrington College. It's basically like a little trade school or whatever, whatever, where you can choose what you want to do. So they have dental assisting, vet tech, medical assisting, um, criminal justice, something like that, um, billing and coding, pharma pharmacy technician. Um, they have a few other programs. So I chose medical assisting. So the first thing that they do is you meet with the counselor and then... Um, you take this little placement test it's really really easy and it just assesses like your math and your english level i don't know why that matters because oh so they'll deny you so basically that's why it matters so basically if you're they don't like since it's not like a regular school they don't offer like english classes or math classes so if you are below whatever their grading system is then they'll reject your application so I did my um, placement test, I enrolled, and I was pregnant at the time, I was a couple months pregnant, and that was back when the first season of Team My Young and Pregnant has started. So basically they enrolled me, they did my placement, I met with the uh, financial advisor, and then boom, I have my orientation. When I went to orientation, I got to meet my teacher, and see my classroom, and kind of see some of the equipment that we were going to be using, and then boom, it was my first day of school. And my classes were from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. So I would leave my house at 6 to be there by, oh, 7.30, sorry. So I'll leave my house at 6 to be there by 7.30. And then I would leave at 12. Um, and so basically how the classes are is it's like the first hour and 45 minutes you do a lab, which is hands-on stuff. The second portion of it you have lecture so that's when you you know do your seat your seat work and your book work and all that good stuff so my teacher's name was miss thomas and she's hella amazing basically if anyone is going to carrington college where i live if you know where i live i'm not gonna say it but miss thomas is the best teacher i've ever had um in a school ever and I feel like when you have a good teacher, it's really important because I've been in other classes where it's just like I cannot connect with the teacher and it makes the class so much harder. So I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I feel like a good teacher is something you don't sacrifice. So basically, I went to school up until I was like seven and a half, eight months pregnant. So I, I was supposed to be on my leave for a month and I was supposed to give birth in September um late september come back uh november 1st um or like november 4th i think was the date um but like life fucked me up like i moved in with bar i moved far away from my school you know i was like moved in so i had to get a job and then my job was nine to five and my school was seven to twelve and it just like my life was just taking a turn so it, it was just so wild at the moment that it was like school ended up being like on my back burner. I always knew that I wanted to go back, but it was just like I didn't have the fucking time. Like, I mean, I guess I actually did have the time, but I just made every excuse. Like every little tiny obstacle became a mountain and I just was like stagnant. Um, and then one day my, t I was in the mall literally and my teacher called me and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm in the mall. And she was like, look, you had the baby. I know life is going crazy. Uh, but get your fucking ass back in school. A sap, no Rocky. Like she was like, I know life is hard, but how hard is life going to be if you don't finish school and get something going for yourself? Bunch of shit happened with me and Bart. And I ended up moving back in with my mom and I ended up selecting to re-enroll on December 10th. Um, and so that's what I did. And I finished out the last like three terms I had or whatever, whatever. Miss Thomas is like 
the foundation to that school and i know it's like oh you got one good teacher bitch like don't overdo it but honestly it's like to have a teacher that's going to work with you understand your circumstances hold you accountable you know what i'm saying hold you to a standard it's just like i i just feel like if there were teachers like that all over people would go to school people would want to go to school so i just love being in, in miss thomas's class so i just ended up taking the hour and 30 minute drive every morning so that i could you know have a good fucking teacher because it's important so fast forward fast forward fast forward fast forward um graduation time comes so basically they do graduation in july if you graduate in august you have to wait until next july to graduate wait a whole year to walk this stage I was not doing that. I just knew that if it was gonna be a year, I wasn't gonna come back. And I, I mean, after a year of graduating, like, do I really care about walking the stage? No. So I tried to push and see if they would let us graduate because we literally graduated like literally August 20th. Why not just let us walk the stage? I mean, I get why, because technically we're not graduated, but it's like, come on okay so they let us walk so that's what you guys saw i walked july 19th but technically i was not graduated because i was in the middle of my externship which didn't end until august 20th or like 24th or something like that um so i walked the stage which was great and now i'm on my externship so externship is basically they place you at a facility for six weeks and you basically get hands-on training on what you're going to be doing in the field. So, like, they the first place they sent me was to a gastro place. And it just didn't work out. And the second place I ended up going to was a place called Glenview Pediatrics. And let me tell you about Glenview Pediatrics. Okay, so moving on to the face um let's talk about glenview pediatrics so basically i was excited to go there because it's a pediatric facility which means that the energy is just a lot lighter usually get there it's family owned it's a wife her husband and then they hired their daughter to work as a receptionist in the front the first thing that they say to me when i walk in is oh my god how are you and bar are you guys still together and I was like, okay, I'm used to that on the street, but not, I've never really had to encounter it in the workplace. And it's a little off-putting because that's my personal business. I mean, what do I expect? I'm on TV, you know what I'm saying? But it's still my personal business. And it's like, you don't want your coworkers asking you about all your personal business. But also, I just felt like, for the manager and the physician to be asking me about it was a little unprofessional, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. I ended up having to take a week break because I was diagnosed with migraines. Um, one day I woke up with this really, really bad headache like right here and it didn't go away. It started affecting my eyesight. It started affecting my, like my ears started ringing. So I went to the doctor and she basically was like, you have migraines. Do you want like there's some type of shots or medication or whatever. So we're still figuring out some treatment plan. But I had to take off my extern for a week, which pushed me a week back. Let me tell you how things all went just, just to shit. So basically, the daughter that they have that works at the front desk, she is... I don't know the right word because I don't want to offend anybody, but she has a learning disability. Um, she's functional. She's not like she doesn't need like aid 24 7 you know but she has a learning disability and it's hard for her to focus on more than like one thing at once which i thought was counterproductive seeing as how she's working receptionist which is checking people in answering the phones checking insurance responding to emails cycling faxes you know so but i get it that's their daughter you know they want to keep a close eye on her if i had a business i would do the same fucking thing no sweat However, it all went downhill one day when the daughter handed me a paper with no name on it and I couldn't file it. I didn't know where to put it because it hadn't it didn't have a patient's name. So as I'm walking up to her, I'm like, you know, do we have a name for the parent of the patient? She's like, I can't fucking deal with this. I need my fucking mom. And it just exploded. 
I walked away. I didn't say shit. Remind you, this is my externship. They have the capability of firing me, pushing me back, kicking me out, anything. So boom. The next day, the daughter comes to me. She's like, you know what? I had an outburst. I'm sorry. But this is not new. She has outbursts every day. She, she does this every day. So on this particular day, I'm like, you know what? Just please, just give me my space. It's been a lot. You just was freaking out. You just was calling me bitches and everything like that. Uh-uh. I don't get the energy for you to keep apologizing, my friend. And I took issue with the the facility because it's like, that's your daughter, true enough. But if you're going to have her working here as an employee, then you have to monitor her behavior. Because if I talk to anybody in this office that way, I would be fucking donezo. You know what I'm saying? And you can't expect to let her talk to people like that because we're all fucking adults. You know what I'm saying? She's an adult herself. So that started an issue. The manager came up to me. Well, why didn't you accept her apology and whatever, whatever, whatever. And I said, it's not that I don't accept her apology. It's just more so of this is a daily occurrence. If somebody cussed you out daily, would you accept their apology daily? And I get it. She has a learning disability. And that's why I choose to not engage and to stay away. But if you know that she's like that and she tends to go off and cuss people out, including the patients and the parents, maybe she should not be working here. I'm sorry, but this is a medical facility. You know what I'm saying? So boom. The next day I come in, she's like, can I see your hours? And I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, I have a strong inclination that you're, you're lying about your hours. Child. When I tell you, it took everything in me to not snatch her up. That's what I mean. That day, when I got off work, I recalculated my hours. Because, you know, I just wanted to make sure sis wasn't lacking nowhere, you know? So I recalculated my hours. Everything's at enough. I send an email. I CC my advisor. I'm like, yo, she's accusing me of lying about my hours. Here's my timesheets. What the fuck is going on? Not to mention all the other rude shit that was taking place. First of all, the doctor calls nobody by their name. He says hello, and if you don't respond fast enough, he says, I don't know why I hired a bunch of slow medical assistants. It's just little stuff. Like, have you ever met people that are just, like, picky and condescending and, like, everything you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, she got mad that I was, mop that I was sweeping the bathroom with the door closed. The door is heavy. There's no door stopper. I can't hold the door and sweep the door. I can't prop the door open. It just was little shit that was adding up and I can tell it was going to get to be an issue. The next day that I got back, well, that was a Friday. So I got back on a Monday and I walk in and she's like, listen, I calculated your hours. They look right. If all is well, you will should be done by Tuesday. I'm like, boom, great, fine, perfect. But I have a weird feeling because it's like, you already accused me of lying about my hours. Then I CC my, my advisor. Now you're reneging on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what really the fuck is going on? The next day I come in, there's a new girl. There's a new extern working there. I'm, as I'm doing that, Kim walks up, which is the, the manager. She's like, get off of your phone. We don't use phones back here. Mind you, I wasn't on my phone. I had papers and I we put bottles in on the tablet. So I'm like, what? I wasn't on my phone. She's like, I saw the light. I saw you move the light as soon as I walked over here. I said, yeah, because I'm holding an iPad. Like, that's the light that you see. And she's like, you know what? I don't have time for this. I'm not going to argue, whatever, whatever, whatever. So let me tell you something. I grabbed my shit and I just said, you know what? I'm the fuck up out of here. Because it had been day by day by day that I, like, it had, it got so bad with their nitpicking that I was starting to wonder whether or not, like, I was smart. Like, I know I had good grades. I knew that I kind of knew what I was talking about. I'm a student, so I don't know everything. But it's like, I'm not an idiot. And yeah, the way they was making me feel was like I was a complete fucking bozo. I've been complaining about this externship. And you guys are refusing to remove me. They're treating me like shit. They've already accused me of lying up my hours. What good can come from this? And I really took the most offense to her accusing me of lying by my hours, mainly because anybody that knows me knows that I drive literally an hour and 30 minutes in traffic every single day. And that's just to school, 35 miles. And I drive 
35 miles home also in traffic because I don't miss traffic going either way and I I might not always be like at school I wasn't always on time but I was always there so it's like I don't have to lie because if I want to stay home I'm gonna stay the fuck home and that's just what it is so after I left I was so upset like I went straight to my school like straight straight to my school and she's like Basically, in a nutshell, she's like, my advisor, she's like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You have to do all 180 hours over again. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, all 180 hours over again, even though I had 176.5 hours. And I'm like, how was that even fair? So I ended up getting double fucked because Kim, the bitch from Glenview Pediatrics, refused to sign off on my hours so that so now they're telling me they're only going to accept 111 hours even though i have 170 what was it 175.5 or 174.5 whatever um and i'm like well why is she not well, why is she not signing my hours? And my advisor is like, well, it's up to her discretion whether or not she wants to sign your hours. And I'm like, but I was there. Like, I was there every day. She's like, well, it doesn't matter. If she doesn't want to sign it, she doesn't have to sign it. Basically, she's mad at you and fuck your time. Fuck the 80 miles a day that you put on your car. Fuck the two weeks you spent. Fuck everything you did. We're not crediting you those hours. I'm like, all right. All right, all right. But since that's the policy and I made it this far, I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'll do the 80 hours. If, if you guys are only gonna give me 111 hours, I'll do the 79 hours. Give me a facility. Please, can you see if it's close to my house? Once again, she gives me a facility that's an hour and 45 minutes away from my house. Guess what? There's no parking. Nearest parking is in a parking garage. Guess how much parking is? 30 six dollars a day let's just think about that 36 dollars a motherfucking day like who do you think i am okay so boom i went for a week and i noticed how much money on top of gas on top of bridge toll because i live a bridge away i was spending on parking and i'm like i'm spending almost 200 dollars on parking a week i went for a week I did 36 hours in that week. So what that put me at like 146 hours or whatever. Monday comes around. The Monday after Holly's party. And I drive to my extern. I have to be there at 9.30. And I realize that they done changed the parking rate. The parking rate is now $38 a goddamn hour. I mean, a day. I'm like... I don't want to pay this money. I'm fed the fuck up. Like, I'm fed the fuck up. So I call my mom breaking down, breaking down. I'm like, Mom, I feel defeated. So I come home, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, because at this point, I'm just feeling like the devil has, like, I'm this close, and the devil is, like, grabbing my weave. Like, bitch, it's not happening. So my mom's like, am I overstepping my boundaries if I call your school? And I'm like, at this point, it's going to take a Jesus goddamn miracle. So call. So my mom calls basically and they give her the policy. Basically that it's up to the discretion of the site whether or not they want to sign on the hours. And all this and all this and all this. Well, I didn't know that I had so much proof. Thank God for Snapchat, Instagram, everything like that. Because I had taken pictures and timestamp videos in the office on the days that she was claiming that I wasn't there. My mom gets on the phone and she's like, you have no resources. You're sending my daughter an hour and 45 minutes away to this externship. She's not getting paid. You want her to pay $36 a day in parking. Now it's going up to $38. The discretion of who, because she was there, put somebody on the phone. Girl, when I tell you that they called me back like, Miss Jones, we've officially graduated you. We called Glenview Pediatrics. They signed off on all 176.5 of your hours. And because you have put in the OT, you're 15 hours over what you needed to even have. You're graduated. So overall, would I recommend Carrington College? Hmm. Hmm. I would say yes. Only because if you have the teacher that I have, then... 
you will really learn a lot more than like school you know what i'm saying i learned about myself from her also something that i wanted to touch on really quickly was just the fact that i get put down a lot people say oh you're just a medical assistant you make too much of it but i'm something and something is better than nothing i know the obstacles i had to jump through to just be a medical assistant and let me educate you folks I hope you don't have the same energy when you walk into a facility because nine times out of 10, the first face you'll see is a medical assistant. Whether it's checking over your appointment, taking your insurance, taking your vitals, taking you back to the room, getting you changed, getting your discharge papers, administering your medicine, taking your blood, giving you, you know, doing all these things is what medical assistants do. You really only see the doctor for 15 minutes of the visit when you're there for an hour. So... Put some respect on my profession and to anybody that wants to become an MA, I hope that this story is not discouraging to you. It's just my story. With that being said, thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see. Follow me on Instagram at Ashley Siren. And until next time, bitches.